Okay, Let, let's get started. Uh, um, I, I will talk first a little bit about myself again. I feel a little bit embarrassed, but this seems to be like a thing that you fall into as a lecturer. You repeat a lot who you are in the first week. Uh, um, my name is Robert Möller. Uh, you can call me Rob or Robert or different versions of it. Uh, I had as well uh, Robbie, that was not so cool, but uh, I, I still <laughs> respond to it, yeah? So uh, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, we, we have just moved, uh, um, well, we, we are now in a, a department. Yeah? We, before we were just the project management group, we are now part of the information science team. Yeah? So um, hence we are in the department of mathematics and information sciences. Yeah? Uh, this is our new uh, home, if you want, under the faculty umbrella. Um, I've given you as well my phone number and uh, um, uh, email, of course, for responding to me and the room number. Yeah? So if, if you have anything that you want to talk with me about it personally, just pop around to my office. Uh, normally either me or Alex are in the office, so uh, it's uh, always there for you if you want. Yeah? Any, any questions at that point? Okay, S simple rule. I, I want to try something because I've experienced something in France that was a lot of fun and uh, it enabled actually questions all the time. So uh, I attended a, a guest lecture from a colleague of mine in, in uh, France and uh, he had the game. If you have a question, just raise your arm. If you don't feel that you want to ask the question, write it on a paper scribble and hand it through to the front. At the end, I will read all the questions out. I will take the joke away. I got this actually when I was in France, in Paris. Yeah? One wrote, when did your hairdresser die? I wasn't very sharp at the time, so I read it out and I said like, well, when I started this job, but I should have really given another answer. But uh, okay, I, I will answer them. Yeah? But uh, please don't try, try to keep it a little bit within the realm. Uh, I will do with another thing. I, I will basically uh, post the uh, um, question uh, under the recording. Yeah? So I record every lecture that you can go through it again uh, with the PowerPoint uh, attached. And you can watch it and you will see their distance learners that will post as well questions and answers. Yeah? So this is a new way of discussing because um, our resources that we have were slightly limiting. So I tried this here this way. If you don't like it, let me know, yeah? because I'm adapting that basically for you. So I, I hope it's a lot more functional. OK, today is the first lecture. It's really uh, sort of be an overview of where we are now with project management. Yeah? So I, I will start off by um, setting a little bit the idea of uh, what we are going through here in this uh, um, semester. And then as a second part, I will show you the history, where these magic bus books of knowledge come from, and uh, uh, a little bit how our, um, well, this is actually a debate to be had in, in six week, weeks. Is project management actually a discipline or, or a, a subgroup? Maybe even like something else? Yeah, so um, that, that is to discover. But literally, I will uh, do a summary of this, uh, this lecture. OK. Uh, and just make sure, are you in the right module? BE 1170, Project Program and Portfolio Management? If it's not, just you, you can leave any second uh, without warning. Yeah? So it's okay. Okay, let's get started. Um, I have always something, this is normally uh, in the lectures for the next lecture. I have missed that this week. So if you want to like get into literature and you prefer to read and, and reflect uh, on it, then I have two suggestions uh, um, basically available. One being a paper, well, one being the uh, journal paper option, and the other one is actually the book selection. Um, there is a parallel um, a book chapter, literally to the titles, uh, in another book yeah, that I've recommended as well. So this is for this. At the end, you will see the reading suggestions for next week. It does help to read up because I use a lot of terminology that maybe needs sinking in. Yeah, we go through it, of course, in the lecture, but it's normally quite quick. Yeah? Okay, let's get started then. What are we covering today? Uh, um, well, it's really educating the project manager, namely you, yeah? or, or maybe project management not as, as like what you're doing, but part of your practice yeah? for the 21st century. 
And uh, I want to cover a little bit project management bodies of knowledge. Uh, why, uh, well, why, why do we have some in the first place? What are they about and uh, does it really matter to us as a practitioner? Should we even pay attention to this? And uh, uh, last but not least, is it fit for purpose? So I, I will try to, to shed some light on it. Um, I, I don't really answer those uh, um, questions. I just give you uh, uh, a duality. I give you answers to both sides. Yeah? Uh, and then, of course, a brief history of management. Uh, I've included different perspectives on that. And uh, um, that, that is where we leave it uh, this session. Hidden in that is as well literally our syllabus that we are going through. Yeah? Uh, it's not so that, like good hidden. It, it's kind of obvious. You will see it as long uh, as, as we go through it. Okay. Educating the project managers for the 21st century. That is you. Yeah? I, I hope you, you take that challenge on you. So there, there is a whole notion really um, from project management. Uh, uh, largely coming from stoichastic experience-based uh, 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 sources. This is a term for describing we do a lot experience-based. Yeah? We follow the routes how people have managed projects before. This is not always the best way. Yeah? And uh, um, uh, here in particular, we, we see an enormous diversion of different types of programs. Then Nowadays, we have actually uh, something, this is quite current, major projects. They, they emerged earlier, but they, they have been rediscovered. And we have recognized something with it, the complexity and uh, interconnection of our projects with the outside world and implications afterwards, which is quite interesting. And then, of course, the notion of project management has unfolded into something called a program. Yeah? Project uh, could be romantically being summarized at, as a projectile. Yeah? You, you loosen your activity or your organization from the rest of society <coughs> and get on with it. Uh, you don't necessarily focus too much on tradition or incremental change. You make it functional. Yeah? This is a notion that will come out as well in the historical analysis. And more recently, we had, of course, uh, uh, the portfolio management approach coming really from the finance industry initially, but then has uh, uh, varied uh, uh, applications as well, uh, actually in personal uh, uh, marketing, yeah? your, your own portfolio maybe. So we, we have a look into that too. With this uh, um, came, of course, uh, post-requirements definitions. Um, so project management was actually kind of invented with looking back at what we had done before. And they try to optimize this. Yeah? So we, we come to that as well and talk about the shift there. And here is another issue with the uh, definition. We have actually switched from project management to the management of projects, to recognizing that there is a, well, we, we call it plural, pluralism, but uh, in, in reality it just means there are many different ways of doing the same thing. Yeah? And being aware of that, then you can basically construct something that is meaningful for you. So this is a, a very standard uh, a version of project management. Yeah? Um, the, the old notion of the iron triangle is kind of hidden in time, budget, and scope. Yeah? We, we come to the historical uh, 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 emergence of this, of course, as well. So you, you have basically the situation of being dropped into a project that you have to do. Yeah? You, you have a context given. Yeah? This is uh, what I have at the beginning of the arrow. Uh, you, you have to deliver this now. There are expectations around it. You have clear definitions, hopefully good goals, and you deliver it. Yeah? So this is the idea. You do it, of course, on time, in budget, to scope, yeah? and execution and delivery is kind of the, the part here. Underlining this, um, we already recognized that uh, earlier to a degree, is integration of time, cost, scope, risk, and, of course, in a hidden uh, dimension, which often is underrated, yeah? so if you speak to practice decisioners, there, there is not a lot of very good practice out there. Yeah? There is practice out there, but it's often uh, uh, overly functional. It doesn't really address the stakeholder needs. It's human resource management, communications, mm -hmm. and, of course, then quality implications, which often go back to the scope, and uh, uh, how you actually procure it. What is your relationship to the other people? Yeah? Uh, this diagram was really taken from Morris and Pindor and Sunderland, but they, I think, had taken it from the PMI book uh, of 2004, if I'm not mistaken. I, I recognize that quite well. Yeah? So th this was really a starting point of, of 
where the definition of project management came from, but as I pointed out, we have already advanced. Nowadays, we, we have realized that it's actually uh, uh, very important to look at the surrounding context and environment. Yeah, and with this, we have kind of um, started looking, how do you actually define the project management in the first place? Yeah, this is something that we will spend the next three, week, three weeks in, in quite some detail on. So, uh, literally, project definition, how do you want to actually use this project vehicle to implement strategy benefits, yeah? So hence we have to think about strategy and finance. Yeah, are you driven by a certain uh, profit margin or is this uh, a project to actually have a greater good to your organization? Yeah, so there are different implications. Uh, uh, technology driven, yeah, requirements versus design. Make a test, do you have actually ti uh, time to uh, prototype it? Yeah, and then of course commercial implication. Is this a project where you just deliver a product and then you walk away? Or is it from birth to cradle? Yeah, you come up with something and you even think about how you are reusing the parts from it maybe for future uh, uh, applications. Yeah, this is then a very different game again. Here we have to look, of course, at supply chain, procurement methods, etc. Yeah, we cover that in quite some detail because this is a very hot topic at the moment. Yeah? Uh, uh, actually, pretty, uh, pretty cool uh, case study is uh, in, in uh, the, the Sharmas here, they probably know this already, uh, Volvo has opened a, a new center in, in uh, uh, Gothenburg uh, uh, at Chalmers University, and they are thinking for Volvo with a, a Chinese uh, uh, mother company now uh, um, uh, about a new chassis that includes it all, yeah? basically following a, a complete shift in their design. Yeah? And those projects, they have an organizational orientation. This will be very expensive, yeah? so it will ignore a lot of that. And they are not the only company. We have that as well, marketing, politics, and so forth. Yeah? Uh, then, of course, very important, this is as well my research area, organizational and structural. Wait a minute. Robert, is the microphone on? Yeah. Is the microphone on? Shall I put it on? Am I not talking loud enough? Okay, okay. Th this will interfere with the camera. This is always a little bit the dilemma, but uh, it's quite all right, I think. Yeah? So, um, then we have the organizational notion. Is it better? Yeah? That's better now, yeah? Okay, perfect. But then we have as well the organizational notion, of course, uh, which is made up of, of how we structure our organization. Yeah, something socially constructed, sometimes physically, yeah, by being in different rooms or, or in the same building. Uh, and, of course, the people involved with it. Yeah? And underlining, again, we have the conceptual phase, feasibility, definition, execution, and close-out and operations. And this is kind of the process notion that we will orient our study on. Yeah? No, quite all right. Please join us. Oh, uh, yeah. Tr try to squeeze yourself in uh, wherever you can find a, a seat. So, yeah, with, with this framework, we, we have a good reference point. There are many alternatives, yeah? So definitions, uh, and, and uh, well, not so much the definitions, but the semantic does change, yeah? We have different cycles. We we. we we will have a good look at different uh, uh, models and project methodologies, as I have called it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really project management approaches, I think, more than uh, uh, actual methodologies. But we will have a close look at this. Yeah? So now we have to go, of course, a, a, schritt, uh, a step further, a little bit German in between. Uh, that, does it matter what we don't agree what it is and what we are talking about? Yeah. So there, there is a problem with, uh, depending on where you went to university potentially or what company you're working in, they have preferred concepts and uh, constructs that we are using. Yeah? But is it a real problem? Well, quite frankly, um, the terminology is actually something that is international. And this is pretty powerful. Yeah, the, I, I think I mentioned this before and I, I will repeat that a lot more. For communication, project management is actually pretty astonishing because it, it bridges uh, um, local description words that, that are grown basically with the industry and allows communication across localities and across time spans. Yeah? So generations have, of course, as well their own uh, vocabulary. But here we stick actually with a um, terminus that has grown, or uh, language, yeah, or, or words, definitions, that has grown over time. They shift, but we understand it, and this is important. 
And uh, um, is the domain or discipline fit for purpose? It depends, of course, how you apply it. If you apply it well, then it's very much fit for purpose, but you need to think. You need to apply the right tools and techniques, of course, otherwise it's a dangerous thing. And I will talk about it a little bit later when we come to the standardization. Unfortunately, I was involved, so if it doesn't work in five years, you know that I, I'm one of them that you can blame. Yeah. So uh, th this is a good thing to know who's responsible for it. Yeah. Okay. So how can we educate this? Uh, uh, it's an education. This is important to recognize. Yeah. It's not the training or anything. So um, thinking from first principles, this is very important. Sometimes looking at it in a very simple manner can give very deep lessons and then refining. Yeah? So what will you know afterwards? Will you know everything? No, you won't. But you will know how to ask very precise questions and by answering those you will be on a very good route. Yeah? Many people don't arrive at these refined questions, they ask very basic questions and then it's very difficult to manage. Yeah? I, I hope that will make sense later <laughs> yeah, when we start actually looking at different issues and different case study scenarios or when it comes to building our own concept for a particular project, what works actually? How can we refine it and, and come to a better managerial approach? Yeah? So again, coming back, it's an education, it's not attempted to be a training. Yeah? So pr Prince 2, uh, um, it's actually in one of my books that I'm suggesting, in the Engineering Project Management, Chapter 17, yeah, summarized, if you want to understand what it is. It's an applied uh, uh, concept, it's a so-called, again, project methodology. It's uh, basically tailored formally from the OCG, I'll come to that later, to IT projects, and they have adapted it to other projects too. Yeah, so it's a, a prescribed form of, of how you should conduct your project. Yeah, uh, um, Further, we, we try to really identify knowledge. Yeah? Knowledge what worked and what doesn't work, uh, or what didn't work. Yeah? And uh, it's, it's not just uh, uh, information that we have here. We, we use a lot of other uh, sources, like wisdom, which becomes quite tricky. Yeah? This is not something that I would want to bear empiry on, but experience from practitioners is insightful. Yeah? They can tell you how they uh, um, basically cope with the situation. There's a heavy practical notion, of course, to it. Yeah, that we, we, uh, as I described earlier, we will have a lot of case studies to look at uh, because otherwise it's too concept. Actually, this talk is quite conceptual. Uh, this will be the most conceptual it will be this semester. Yeah? Then um, normative flavor, this means we look at what people have done, yeah? uh, and, but we will be sensitive to context and uh, social <coughs> technical challenges. This is really what I hope to bring out here. Um, I have been criticized actually in last year's feedback for not describing enough the politics, especially when you go into a new uh, um, uh, company and uh, the, the inner plea of this whole uh, sentence that I got uh, written there was not just political. They wanted really psych psychopolitical application. You as a young project manager and a new project team, how does it actually feel? And uh, uh, quite frankly, we, we cover that next semester. Some of you may have already had that in other modules. Yeah, so um, this is not what I'm aiming to address here. Okay. Are there best practices? This is always a question. Yeah? The, uh, um, well, the, I, I will give you a few that, that have been in literature identified as such. And I, I hope you will see them with a, a, a certain criticism or, or awareness that there, there will be more. So uh, aligning the project strategy with the sponsors, including uh, uh, periodic reviews. Yeah? So this is really, your, your projects are fitting in the greater organizational scheme. Yeah? Defining requirements in a testable manner. So we, we are trying to quantify here or qualify and test it afterwards. So that specifications and solution can be verified against them. We will do that as, uh, again, yeah, so as well, interesting point. So it, it's really the tools and techniques that allow us to show our colleagues what we are doing in project management. Yeah? Managing design and technology so that innovation are thoroughly examined before proceeding to full project commitment. Yeah, this means don't, don't take crazy projects, yeah, quite frankly. If you don't have the resources, this is a bad start. Yeah? You, then, then you need more time. Uh, it, it works as well without time. Work together with universities. You know, we, we like that stuff. Uh, obviously, we, we don't charge that much. Yeah? And uh, uh, there, there are some ways around, but uh, you, you need time for this. Yeah? Second, on the control notion, this is in particular uh, uh, coming from 
Yeah, I, I realized, I wasn't really aware, I think five years ago, what, what German project management is like, but we do like to steer and control. This is a big lesson that I learned. Uh, defining and managing the project uh, scope, schedule, resource, and budget, ensure, ensuring optimal financing, yeah, and as well that you have the finance at the right time. <coughs> uh, this, this is uh, often, uh, I've seen many projects failing just on their premises, uh, or uh, basically uh, uh, running over cost or, or having other issues with it. Um, including limiting changes once the design has been agreed. Yeah, design freeze, we will uh, talk about that quite a bit. Yeah, the, the, uh, uh, the worst scenario for design freeze is scope creep. Yeah? This is another thing that we will uh, put in relation, means that uh, uh, changes are, are coming in later and the scope is actually shifting. Yeah? Then integrating cost schedule, scope measurement, and con uh, conducting, of course, trend analysis on anticipated outturn costs. Yeah, so again, it's quite quantified. And this looks very good in the meeting. Yeah? You can make big charts, and, and it's certainly an illustration. But it's, again, the hard stuff. Yeah? You, you see the trend here already. So then resourcing, it's procuring, inducting resources into project uh, in as positive and cost-effective value-enhancing manner as possible. Yeah? And then building uh, effective project teams I, I was actually impressed with this notion. This is kind of soft and flowery, yeah? but uh, uh, actually they even have a scorecard for that. And then exercising leadership. This was as well uh, uh, quite uh, uh, hard actually, because you were supposed to see actually the achieved goals on a regular basis. So it's as well a review process. Then the performing uh, came actually just to decision making tools, quite frankly, and uh, uh, communication uh, logs. But uh, again, this was uh, uh, postulated as best practice. And then this was actually astonishing because uh, this is something that uh, should be probably a little bit harder or, or um, certainly be more captured. Reviewing lessons learned after and during the project and feeding other knowledge into projects through formal peer review sessions or mentoring schemes or something like that. Can I just ask, quick question. Has anybody come across the last one in their project? Do you do peer reviews? Okay, this is good. A few hands. Yeah, this is not very common. Uh, this is like something that uh, uh, some companies have done because they were not so project driven. This is good practice. Uh, there's, there's still a long way to come. Some uh, uh, knowledge based industries have adopted that already heavily. And, and it's uh, uh, something that we will have a look, uh, um, long look at because it's something that we need to get right. Uh, at the moment, a lot of things go wrong uh, due to that reason. But what, what does that mean? If we don't do this, uh, uh, imperi for me is very simple because uh, you repeat the mistakes of the former, uh, 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 former uh, generation. Yeah, so this is very bad. There's a setting implicit that uh, uh, it's likely to make mistakes if we don't know what we are running into. Yeah, so this is a, a big thing. Okay, enough from, with the dry uh, concepts. Let's get a little bit into the uh, uh, history behind it. Oh, sorry, I have one more. Yeah, uh, uh, there, there are problems with it, of course. Yeah? Uh, um, the problem is, at what point do rules become so generalized as to be uh, of limited value or so specific that they are not generalizable anymore? Yeah? Some really good projects are actually very specific. Yeah? The, uh, in the um, references uh, next week, we are looking actually at the CERN, uh, um, at the Hadrian Collider. Yeah? This was a brilliant project, but it's very applied. They started somewhere off with prints too, and then abandoned that very quickly and came up with pretty good tools. And it was tailored to their needs. Yeah? This is where we want to arrive, that we can do things like that. Then uh, two problems here, of course. Our knowledge of reality is incomplete. Yeah? By, by definition, we, we shape it as we go along. The nature of our knowledge in different areas of uh, project management varies greatly. But this is as well the interesting stuff. Yeah? So comparing, uh, yeah, so for example, if we look at procurement and construction, it's very different to automotive. Yeah? But this is a good comparison because they're sitting on the edge on either side. Yeah? And then very hard to have uh, uh, predictive uh, substantive rules, easier to reprocess. So here we look as well at the limitations of our tools and techniques. Yeah? This is very important. Uh, and last but not least, we, we recognize the need to tailor it basically to the industry sector, to the company business unit, and your project, of course. Sometimes even to the team, that it's uh, workable for you. Yeah. 
So, how, how can we link that actually in the practical notion? Well, we, we can actually bridge this by scholarly activity. This is you and this is me and this is all the people that have actually entered into this long dialogue. It's written. Yeah, There's a long dialogue over this and I, I will highlight a few uh, uh, in a second in my histogram uh, that, that I show you. Um, so, know the literature, uh, um, clearly articulate as well what you want from it. Yeah, if you can do that, then you're already uh, um, half there. And then, of course, met uh, methodologically, um, sound theoretically grounded. Yeah? We, we borrow here from a lot of different disciplines. Yeah? We, we go in the whole spectrum what university has to offer. And, of course, respect for the data. Yeah? So, and uh, um, scrupulous application and testing. Yeah? So don't be shy. It, it, it's supposed to fail. So try the theories till you can refine them. Yeah, this is the idea. And rigorous research, be honest about your data. Don't lie there. This is very bad. Yeah, and uh, most important, I hope it will be relevant to you too. Yeah, this is a very important thing to me personally. Okay, what is the underlining uh, uh, method of this? Well, uh, uh, it's teaching, uh, multidisciplinary, as I mentioned, multi-sector, practical, but theoretical, research, relevance, value, value very important, valuable to you, and hopefully an impact on you, uh, that you stay... Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, engage basically, and uh, I hope as well that we will have a knowledge transfer. Yeah, that we that I learn from you what you are actually doing, and vice versa. Yeah, and of course uh, um, we we have there as well a, a slight device, but uh, we are getting there. I think it's the role of professions versus higher education institutions, we have a parallel world. I will highlight that in a second. There was the professional bodies, they think they have the right way. Uh, in our current uh, um, a new uh, body of knowledge from APM, uh, I will say a few words to that. Uh, Alex was heartbroken, my stuff got, got in. Yeah? So uh, um, uh, his stuff didn't get in. So there, there are certain implications with this as well. Okay, here's the uh, um, underlining methodology to it. Uh, uh, this is quite technical. Yeah? Ontology is what we are doing. Yeah? It's uh, uh, in a way scope from project management to 3 p.m. Uh, um, yeah, I, I will just go through it basically. Th this is uh, uh, the underlining methodology. Yeah? So, um, ontology, what we are doing, we are managing processes, technology, commercial, strategy, and the people, of course. Yeah? And uh, uh, theoretically, we are aware, so this is a knowledge that we take uh, away, normative tendencies. Yeah? Actually, in project management, we can quite well uh, uh, predict, actually, with this, quite sadly. Yeah? Norms are not, yeah? <laughs> it's too loud. Cold. OK. Uh, Okay, I, I make it 23 degrees, right? This sounds good. I, I hope this works. Yeah, this, this was 20. So this was freezing for the back. I think it's more the airflow. Yeah. Okay, so uh, arm move. No, the, uh, I won't make any gestures. Here. The, okay, if it gets uh, uh, too warm, let me know. We, we put it down again and test how, how quick the system responds. Uh, response, yeah. Okay, yeah, my apologies. Uh, is it getting better? Is there a change yet? Okay. Okay, so um, basically theoretically aware and then properly researched. This is something that we will look at. Uh, there, there are a few studies that, that uh, um, read a little bit more like opinion rather than soundly researched. And then last but not least, uh, uh, methodology is really like focusing on the 21st century's needs. Yeah, so we, we rehearse a lot of the um, principles that are underlining, but we don't actually necessarily go back to it. Yeah? Okay, 21st century. What, what do I mean by this? Um, well, I have lined a few areas out uh, and where they are coming from. Uh, I have broken this actually down into a, a little bit more entertaining way. So um, this comes from Morrison's, and I, 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 uh, Peter Morris, and I have enlarged it a little bit. Um, I, I will explain it in a second. This is it. 
Yeah, so this is uh, uh, my <laughs> typogram. No, don't worry, it's not as uh, uh, bad as it looks. Uh, well, it is, but... Uh, um, so on the left side, you have the keywords and the methods and uh, um, tools that have been developed along. After those lectures, those will all have a deep meaning for you. You will be able to select what it is. This is good, isn't it? A PowerPoint slide kind of showing what we will understand. Yeah, uh, you probably already recognize a few of it, yeah? Um, let, let's try one. Uh, what, what does Apollo mean? What, what is it? Yeah, Apollo? Yeah, I take guesses, yeah? Spaceship, yeah, it's uh, kind of right. Space was the notion, yeah, and, and we built ships for it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, actually, we built the rocket. This was brilliant. Uh, whoever came up with that, I would want to shake his hand personally. Yeah, so you you put the explosive into a shell and set somebody on top. This was a good idea. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> literally the, the the red dots are, are case studies, yeah, and uh, uh, associated projects, and uh, the blue uh, dots are, are literally tools or applications that we have drawn. Yeah. So this is the idea, uh, you, you can study it in your own time. I have actually a little story to it now. Yeah, so you, you see, I, I, I have actually ignored kind of everything before the 50s. There was a lot of other stuff I've included this uh, uh, now in this, uh, so that we don't lose much. Can you say study this in your own time, where you, where you start at the top? You, you don't have to study that in your own time. You will just, it will come to you during the lectures. This is like the overview of what we are going through. Yeah, the, uh, uh, you, you can be a little bit more passionate and, and just study it alphabetically. Yeah, or chronological, uh, uh, but uh, um, I didn't want to do this really to you. Okay, um, a little bit the narrative to maybe ground elements of it there, yeah, because this is a lot, and I, I have uh, uh, strategically placed it that way to make actually sense of it. So um, you can see there underlining uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, themes, and I, I, I have even highlighted a few new ones that, that are actually coming in as our topics because they're kind of hot topics, and uh, um, yeah, basically uh, uh, will have an extra emphasis. So I've as well kind of uh, um, in the lectures postulated what the current questions are, yeah, the refined questions that, that need further research. Okay, let, let's start off. Um, uh, the, the ones that are not on the timeline is, is literally, um, yeah, I, I've written where it is. It's a bridge at Perth over the Tay. Where, where is this? Perth? Oh, 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 this was a bad question. Sorry. Perth over the Tay. Where, where is that? <coughs> yeah, the, the, you know, we had the right answer already here. So Australia is, of course, what you could say by accident, but... Uh, uh, it's in Scotland, yeah? And, and this was, uh, as a matter of fact, um, the first uh, uh, recognition of, of um, something called uh, yeah, project management. Um, there, there were three fellows, uh, Brindley, uh, uh, yeah, I have to read it really, that I don't get the names wrong, Smeaton and Rennie, and they were really concentrating of coming up with principles of getting large infrastructure projects that they were doing often for um, local, yeah, how, how would I describe this now quickly? Um, so you had like local governors and they were basically building projects for them and they were quite temperamentous. So they were thinking about how they could actually organize the bridge building more securely to actually arrive at something that is repeatable without having loads of people die and, and uh, the bridge falling together. Yeah? So this was really the, the uh, foundation and uh, um, they, they had like principles of how to build and, and do civil engineering of bridges and infrastructure. Uh, so quite quite interesting chaps. And, and they really started actually chronologically uh, writing down what they were doing and what worked, what didn't work. So there was a first step really of, of um, what we recognize as project management. By the way, if, if you go in history books, every book has kind of their own history. Normally they start uh, off with uh, pyramids or, or uh, um, some agent buildings in uh, Pompeii or something like that. Yeah, but th th there are no principles that were recorded. Yeah, so it's pretty bad for us as scholars, you know, to, to um, basically not have access to the writings and readings, how they did it. Yeah, so this is what we are after. So after that, uh, um, I, I jumped quite a bit. Yeah, this was kind of uh, around uh, um, 18, well, 17, end of 18th century, yeah, the bridges. Uh, we, we really had that, the gunshot, and uh, it was the idea that you can break a big work package down into 
smaller work packages. Yeah, this is a work breakdown structure on the left side where you basically divide the little packages and you, you do something uh, uh, where you can actually see where you are with estimated time against it. Yeah? So the Gantt sharp. And this came, of course, by Harry Gantt. And uh, um, in reality, there's a hidden story to this. This is very good for our English literature. But uh, in the Polish literature, there was a young man, Admix, uh, 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 um, who already came up with this. And he published this in 1896, but it, it, it's kind of hidden in our literature, but it was very well done too. And he had even uh, um, a polygon to a functional analysis. Yeah? So this was quite cool, actually. Yeah? And uh, he came as well up with a harmonigraph, yeah? so that you could move, actually, uh, the activities according to what I've indicated here, start-to-start -start activity, where dependents lie. So this was pretty cool. Yeah? That, that was really what we are potentially still using. Yeah? But uh, it comes from 1912. Yeah? So, so, you know, this is even before my graph starts. Yeah, then, then we had uh, um, uh, this. What, what is this? Does anybody know? Never before such white washes with so much color safety. I take guesses. Who, who did this? Is it German version of gas? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, but uh, it was really uh, uh, Procter and Gamble, 1920s, yeah, and they started with brand management. Yeah, they, they came up with projects that were branded and they were like basically spinning it off as a product. That was pretty cool, yeah. Arguably, uh, they, they brought the brand management, and uh, um, this meant as well that they had uh, a single manager for product development. Uh, this was as well an uh, uh, interesting development. We, we have this now. Yeah? As a project manager, you are responsible potentially. Yeah? Then, yeah, we, we have some others in between. Uh, um, I, I actually left them away. Um, the US Air Corps uh, in the 30s came really up with the idea of a project management office. They kind of had like temporary uh, plant uh, wherever they went, so they had a base. Uh, this was not very new, but it was new that they actually did the coordination from there so, uh, too. Uh, so planners went actually there, and that was normally uh, people that would stay at home because they were not necessarily part of it. Uh, strategists would move in, or, or generals, but normally still with some distance, and that actually central base was new. That was uh, US Air Corps, 1930s. Then we have Exxon, that, that was this build. Uh, picture. Uh, um, what, what is Exxon? What do they do? It's an oil company. Oil company. Yeah, they they came basically up with the notion of a project engineer. Yeah. So um, when they expanded, they actually a remit of um, managerial duties combined with engineering. They realized that this engineering inside is very valuable. Yeah? So very very uh, technical function. Then uh, uh, the the next one that I have here is um, the uh, well. Gulick really proposed a, a, a major coordinator of, of projects yeah, that looks at the administration. This is the 1940s. So we started to build actually more uh, uh, paper trails and, and as well the updating of the gunshots, of course, required times, uh, time. And then we, we had uh, um, by 1940s uh, uh, really an embryonic uh, uh, subdiscipline. You, you can actually find literature in managing... Uh, yeah, managing organizations, temporary notions. Uh, so there, there's already a little bit literature that you can duck into. Yeah? Then uh, I jump here quite a bit. Uh, uh, this is actually after the Second World War. In the Second World War, there, there was a, le a lot of focus in operational research, uh, techniques for collecting and analyzing data, for obvious reasons. Then we, we had as well um, the Manhattan Project, of course. I haven't really stripped that down uh, too much here. But the Manhattan Project was the first one that really had uh, a proper project management toolkit. That, that was pretty unique. And it was a science project at the same time. Yeah, so you could see uh, science coming together with structured outputs in a time frame. Yeah, so this was unique. Uh, um, yeah, in, in the 50s then we, we had uh, procurement pressures. That was uh, largely um, the US made a lot of... Uh, um, Progress was that again. It was the U.S. forces actually that that uh, came up with new procurement me methods and modern systems and project terminology that that really became like a dominant thing for them. And uh, um, this is actually the uh, um, 
the polar missile program uh, and, and this was actually the first time that they thought about that uh, the rockets are so dangerous that they have to do a PERT analysis. Does anybody know what that is? What, what is a PERT analysis? So, some people not. Can, can, what, what does P stand for? <laughs> this, this was not correct. Uh, there was not yet a correct answer. Yeah. An E? Okay, okay, we, we come to the next session, yeah, but, uh, okay, the, they, they actually developed the PERT, and the idea was that nuclear missiles uh, <coughs> would not be actually where people would live, uh, they were in the ocean. And, uh, uh, um, again, we, we have a lot of technologies from this uh, project, actually, so we, first of all, we started actually to programify, there were many different uh, small projects that were running under the same resource scheme, and that is actually when system management, yeah, so the logical alignment of uh, resources, to needs of, of uh, running them actually emerged, emerged yeah, uh, as well. Then we, we had uh, um, yeah, two, two uh, chapters, well, uh, uh, DuPont really developed the arrow diagram. Uh, this is a logical path for, for uh, figuring out how to go best forward, where, where you get stuck, and then potentially depending on what uh, approach you're using, allocating resources accordingly. And uh, literally after that uh, uh, came our uh, hinted uh, um, Apollo program. Yeah? And uh, I have, of course, a, f a picture from it. And this is a, a spectacular one. Yeah? This is actually Apollo mission uh, uh, 11. And uh, this was actually when they landed on the moon. Yeah? And Apollo was really this, uh, um, uh, if you want, space race that uh, um, the Americans used as a political, uh, the, the, it's a whole raft in, in, of projects actually, in, in this uh, uh, Apollo program, um, because there were uh, lobbying projects, uh, so they advertised it, there was mediation, there was public buy-in, and there, there was a whole uh, notion as well of technology projects, and of course rocket design, and, and actually space uh, ship uh, uh, design, yeah, as, as we had, and uh, there was a lot of failure. So, so by Apollo 11, you can already implicitly uh, take it that uh, there were 10 before it. Yeah? And uh, it, it was a space race uh, with the Soviet Union. Yeah? And there were a lot of uh, concepts from project management that kind of um, came out of that. Yeah? So this is actually pretty cool. Um, I have listed it in my notes. Uh, there, there's a paper on this, yeah? if, if you want to read up on this, because we have adapted a lot from it. Yeah? Then, uh, um, after this, uh, uh, yeah, I jumped quite a bit. Uh, um, the, we, we have then as, actually as well PMI being formed. Yeah, this is a, a project management institute in America. It's a professional body, yeah? so they sell that training. So you, you have to be careful. That they, yeah, I, I should maybe not, uh, there, there's a paper about consultants. Yeah? So um, they, they have good ways of doing it. But uh, um, it, it's a commercial uh, um, uh, institute, yeah? so there, there's an implication with this. Then um, we had the oil crisis in the 70s. That meant that we had actually uh, um, larger projects actually starting. Uh, so we're talking now as well about larger projects. Maybe there's a parallel. Yeah? So governments not write, taking the effort of writing out all these small projects that are needed, if they just say, like, we, we need major infrastructure. Please build for us the Olympics, yeah? or, or please, uh, well, build a, a, a cross-rail project. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very uh, different application, if you want. Um, this was already in the 70s. Yeah, here largely to do with our aerospace. We we had uh, um, uh, um, as well, um, uh, yeah, aerospace. Uh, the Concorde yeah, coming out as a, a, a prestige. Uh, um, project between uh, a French and British uh, partnership, of course, yeah? and then you had as well on the uh, Russian side the equivalent, yeah? or, or Soviet Union side the equivalent. So um, from that uh, we arrived as well at the principles of managing projects successfully, and this is kind of what, what is still a very important part, and uh, on, on that uh, I have another uh, beautiful project. Who, who recognizes this? I, I spoke already about it. Yeah, Olympics. Now, a quick question. After the Olympics, success or failure? I've asked it repeatedly <coughs> along the years. Uh, it, it differs every time. Who thinks it was a success? Okay, a few. <laughs> I like that. Oh. Uh, who thinks it was a failure? 
<laughs> okay, as well, only a few. Okay, we have uh, huge people that are still thinking about it. Yeah, they want to see the facts first. But recently, we, yeah. Uh, um, why a failure? Why a failure? Okay, so they ripped everything uh, down to the ground again, yeah? So uh, the, the whole point of the legacy that we will talk about is maybe a shifting game, yeah? Okay, okay, very good. The, um, yeah, then, then I have more recent one. Who recognizes what that was? Yeah, what was it? <coughs> yeah, it was a space dive. And, and who funded this? What, what was the purpose of this? This was a project. Yeah? Red Bull. Red Bull. Why Red Bull? <laughs> Marketing. Marketing. For what? Red Bull Marketing. Yeah, okay. So it's an extreme space dive, yeah? Actually, it's kind of parachuting, arguably. But in reality, this was just a marketing stunt from Red Bull, yeah? In reality, we have tried to develop a, a spacesuit that we can wear when we fly around the, well, it's basically for out of space uh, tourism. Yeah, you, you will have this spacesuit if you sit in this uh, uh, um, beautiful, well, spaceship yeah, that, that brings you out of the atmosphere. And if it crashes or doesn't work anymore, this is how you're getting back. Yeah? <laughs> so, uh, uh, <coughs> Yeah, and he tested this for us. Yeah? So this is basically the spacesuit that you will have. Still being adjusted at the moment, it's still too expensive. Yeah? It's a prototype. But it, it's literally tailored for uh, um, everyday use. Yeah? So it's a lot more flexible. Our old spacesuits were actually a hard cast, very difficult to use. Yeah? You, you needed kind of like a robotic degree before you could actually do anything with it. And uh, um, he basically tested it for them. Yeah? It was a pretty bad test because he's a crash, well, he's a, a extreme sport, uh, uh, yeah, um, how would you call that, edging person that likes to test his limits. And this is, of course, a very bad uh, uh, comparison to somebody that uh, uh, just has to dive out of it because uh, their life depends on it. Yeah, but this was the idea behind it, yeah? And uh, um, the, where, where I point this out is that here they had as well huge financial issues and they have gone quite uh, flexibly and into it. They had a lot of time, not so much time, but uh, um, they, they have basically branded the project with other outcomes and could uh, uh, afford actually to run this project. Yeah? So we, we will have a look at, into this. This is actually pretty cool, and it meant as well that the uh, client had to be educated. Yeah? This started off by the NASA, and then actually merged. Uh, did you see that somewhere? Uh, well, it was actually written somewhere. Uh, maybe not on this fo uh, um, uh, uh, photo, but NASA is a, a national body, yeah? and uh, they actually stepped back and allowed private industries to come in to actually generate the capital. And, and there are really good documentations over it, and they have used smart tools for it as well. Yeah? So the, the main point from this was really understanding, as a project manager, the power of media, mediating. Yeah? Uh, 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 the, the dark, uh, um, we, we come to that in quite some detail because it's a very hot topic at the moment. Do you do any risk assessment before they launch this project on another issue? Yeah, they, they have done that actually, very detailed. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, um, if you are really interested in this, there's a brilliant YouTube uh, documentation on the risk in, in detail, and it's called Space Dive. It, it was done by uh, BBC. So it's actually pretty cool to watch because, um, uh, by the way, project managers lost their job as well in this. Because another guy was like, I don't want to work with Red Bull together, and I don't want to work with this hot headed. Uh, not, not that I'm judging, this is what he said, yeah. So, uh, uh, hot-headed, uh, um, uh, extreme sport lad together. He has no understanding of organization and, uh, yeah. And uh, this was apparently true. And, and here as well, uh, uh, Felix has as well a drama in between, yeah. So this is all actually evaluated in the risk. Uh, the second space diver even, who wasn't yet training. So there were other issues with that too, yeah. Was there about 60,000 foot or something? This is a good question. Uh, I think, wait a minute, where stratosphere? This must be uh, 34K, right? Is that true? Does anybody know how high he, he uh, where he actually jumped from? Sorry? I think you're right. 37 was here's suggestion as well. 
it's just our stratosphere like kind of gets flimmery around 20,000 and then it, it's just a turbine design you know like if, if you go uh, to anybody here they will tell you that there are uh, certain air conditions that make it difficult where a rocket is actually beneficial so it, it must be above that yeah Okay, but uh, uh, something to investigate, yeah, good good question, how high did he actually jump? This is still the world record, yeah, so this was of course why Red Bull was behind it, they, they are quite keen on this. Um, Another question? Yeah, please. Um, he was supposed to like break four records, he broke three? Yeah, he was not the fastest. Yeah, so is that a success for uh, This is a good question. Next week we will look in that, uh, <laughs> at that in, in detail. When is it actually success? So, well, uh, you, you could uh, maybe, what, what would be your answer? For four uh, 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 records as a goal, uh, and you achieve three, what is it? It depends on the success criteria that you uh, agree on first. Well, he, he certainly agreed to those, uh, uh, um, but uh, um, yeah. Um, maybe um, a quick uh, uh, voting, please. Um, do you want to have a, a ten minutes break, or, or shall we just run on? No, okay, I've already noted. So, who who wants to have a, a ten minutes break? Okay, in this case, over the break, go deeply into yourself and think about it. He didn't make the speed record. Did, was he still successful? Yeah. So, um, and in ten minutes, we we come back here. Thank you.